couldn't leave you on a cliffhanger after what Mrs. Jules just told the class. So let's read chapter 10. Mr. Gorf. Mr. Gorf? muttered Joy as she walked down the stairs to recess. Did she say Mr. Gorf? Marisa nodded. Leslie caught up to them. Did she say Mr. Gorf? I think so, said Marisa. Do you think? Leslie asked. I don't know, said Marisa. I hope not, said Joy. Before Mrs. Jules ever came to Wayside School, the children had a teacher named Mrs. Gorf. She wasn't very nice. Even Myron was worried, and Myron had never gotten in trouble in his whole life. Mr. Gorf might be a good teacher, said Eric Bacon. Just because he has the same last name as Mrs. Gorf doesn't mean he'll be horrible. That's right, said Eric Ovens. People with the same name can be different. I agree, said Eric Fry. Do you get that joke? All three Erics. There's a, there are probably lots of people named Gorf, Damien said hopefully. I bet if you look in the phone book, you'd find ten whole pages of Gorfs. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not coming to school tomorrow, said Joy. Me neither, Marisa agreed. But the next morning, their parents made them all go to school. Everyone arrived on time. Nobody dared to be late. But there was no teacher. Dee Dee sat down next to Myron. Is he here? She whispered. Shh, whispered Myron. He folded his hands on his desk and stared straight ahead. Can you pretend you're sitting at a desk, folded, hands folded, straight, staring straight ahead? One by one, the children entered the classroom and quietly sat down at their desks. They couldn't take any chances. Mr. Gorf might walk through the door at any moment. Or maybe he was already there, hiding in the coat closet, just waiting for someone to do something wrong. I didn't want to come to I didn't want to come today, whispered Calvin, but my parents made me. Shh, he might hear you, said Bebe. Mr. Kid Swatter's voice came over the PA system. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Mr. Kid Swatter, the children all answered together, like good little boys and girls. They listened attentively to their principal. Then, when Mr. Kid Swatter was finished, they took out their arithmetic books and started working. After that, they did social studies, reading, and spelling. When the sp when the recess bell rang. The children put their books neatly in their desks, quietly lined up, and walked out of the room and down the stairs. So how's your substitute teacher? asked Lewis out on the playground. Tough, said Bebe. I've never worked so hard in my life. I did more work before 10 o'clock than most people do in a day, said Calvin. But he's very fair, Myron quickly added, just in case Mr. Gorf was listening. He might have been hiding in the bushes. Yes, he's nice and fair and a very good teacher, said Jenny. Very smart, too, said Dee Dee. We're lucky to have him. Lewis twisted at the end of his mustache between his finger. Twisted the end of his mustache between his fingers. After recess, the children returned to class and worked until lunchtime. At lunch, they all ate the food Miss Mush served them. Their manners were perfect. After recess, no, Mr. Gorf might have been hiding under the table. After lunch, they returned to class and practiced their handwriting. Myron looked around. All of a sudden, he got a terrible urge to do something. Anything. Ugga-bugga, he said. Jenny put her finger to her lips. Biff-boff-boof, said Myron a little louder. Shh, said Jenny. Myron stood up. No, he shouted. I don't have to be quiet. Everyone tried to get Myron to hush up. Myron climbed on top of his desk. Look around, folks. There's no teacher. We're doing all this work for nothing. Get down, whispered Allison. Do you want to get us all in trouble? Myron jumped on top of Allison's desk. Hi, Allison, he said. Then he hopped over to Dee Dee's desk, then Ron's, then Marisa's. Please, Myron, said Marisa. This is fun, said Myron. He made a great leap and landed on top of the teacher's desk. Mrs. Jules had always kept a can, a coffee can full of Tootsie Roll Pops on her desk. It wasn't there. Hey, anyone want a Tootsie Roll Pop? asked Myron. Everyone stared at him. Myron took one for himself. He sat in the teacher's chair with his feet up on the teacher's desk and sucked on one. Please stop, Myron, begged Jenny. What if he's hiding in the closet? Get real, said Myron. Why would he hide in the closet? What if Mr. Gorf was married to Mrs. Gorf, said Allison. Myron laughed. Who would ever want to marry Mrs. Gorf, he asked. Somebody had to marry her, said Rondi, or else she wouldn't have been a Mrs. What if he loved her very much, said Allison, and then one day she didn't come home from work, and he never saw her again, and he didn't know what happened to her, but he knew she used to teach this class. So he might be hiding in the closet to find out if we're the ones who got rid of her. 
If I were married to Miss Gorf, Mrs. Gorf, said Jason, I'd be glad she never came home. He should thank us. Nice going, Jason, said Jenny. If he is hiding in the closet, you just told him we're the ones who got rid of his wife. Well, if I didn't, you just did, said Jason. It doesn't matter, shouted Myron, because Mr. Gorf is not hiding in the closet. Myron went to the back of the room and opened the closet. A man stepped out. Thank you, he said. I accidentally locked myself in here this morning and I've been waiting for someone to open the door. Myron swallowed his Tootsie Roll Pop, stick and all. Uh-oh.